Um, Lens are back, baby. <laughs> I don't know what made me say that. Hey, how's it going? And welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today, uh, I'm going to go through my collection, my selection of whiskies. Uh, talk a little bit about them and also talk about how to maybe build a, a collection of your own uh, Just how to start off and how to slowly build it up uh, So yeah, we'll get down to this. Uh, my floors are getting done tomorrow So I'm having to move all the whiskey off the shelves uh, so nothing gets uh, broken or anything. So yeah, let, let's get down to this So some of the bottles will be the uh, same from last year. They either haven't been opened or haven't been drunk yet um, but yeah, there's a few new ones that you might see. Uh, this is the Dufftown uh, 11 year old for the Milano Whiskey Festival. I think a lot of times when creating a collection of, or a selection of whiskies, uh, the auctions are quite good. Uh, auctions be quite good for building a little collection up. Uh, you can get some bangers on there. This was really cheap for what it is. And if that's something that's uh, obviously driving a lot of people is the money, the price of things. Uh, auctions can be good for getting little bargains um, and slowly building your collection up that way. Another thing you'll notice, uh, that's just this is the third Ardbeg here, the Ardbeg 8 up for discussion. Um, a good thing for like, creating a collection as well I suppose, depends what, what your collection's for. Um, mine's, is, mine's is for drinking. Uh, but I know people who collect whiskey, um, who will buy, say, Ardbeg or a set like that, uh, which is always good to look at the sh look at look at <laughs> on the shelf, things like that. It's good to have like a kind of broad um, spectrum of different whiskies from a distillery, just to get a gauge of what a distillery is like, to try different ones, uh, see how their spirit comes through in the individual bottles. So I think that's always a good thing to keep in mind when building a collection. Uh, is maybe try and get a few from the same distillery, from the same region, uh, but we'll touch on that later about the region. Uh, so yeah, I've got a few Ardbegs, and yeah, it's good to see, see the difference in the three of them. Like I was saying with Ardbeg, uh, getting a collection of independent bottles, different different distilleries, different whiskies. it's good to gauge uh, how well an independent bottle it is, uh, how, how well their stock is, how well they select their whiskies by getting a good range of them as well. So you'll probably see a few um, whiskies from the same independent bottler and that, that's another thing I, I gauge my collection on and uh, how my collection builds to be to that, that extent is because I like trying different uh, whiskies from the same independent bottler or the same distillery just to get an overall impression of the distillery. So that's always good to, uh, or sorry, an overall impression of the producer or distillery. Uh, so that's always good to keep that in mind when building the collections, maybe try a few from the same uh, bottler or something like that. A new addition to my um, Whiskey shelf, whiskey collection is a humidor and some cigars in there. I won't really go into detail what, what cigars are in there. There's just there's only a handful. Um, but I cleared a space on the shelf, uh, cleared some whiskies off it that are going to be used for something later in the future. And yeah, I put this this humidor on there. So I'm starting to try and get really into cigars. And I don't know if that's going to be another expensive hobby that's going to cost me a lot of money. Uh, but hopefully I can just. Uh, get a decent collection of them going as well.
So another thing I wanted to touch upon, uh, two things really, like Ardbeg, uh, getting an overall gauge for a distillery. So one thing's uh, JA Mitchell with Springbank. I've got a lot of Springbanks, um, Kilkerran, Long Row, not a lot of Hazelburn because from venturing, from uh, trying different Springbanks, different JA Mitchell whiskies, I've realised that Hazelburn's one that I'm not really that keen on. Uh, so I've kind of built up my collection around that. Uh, also Campbelltown region in general, I do like Glen Scotia but not as much as Springbank. Uh, these two blends that I have from Dornach, uh, they are I think predominantly Glen Scotia and really enjoyable. But yeah, I think uh, when you find a region that you like, which is Campbelltown for me, um, some people really like Speyside, some people really like Isla, uh, you can build a collection that way, build it around that, start finding whiskies from that region. And it's the same when you find a distillery you like, uh, quite lucky because Springbank is a a good distillery, it's a little hard to get a hold of, but sometimes a little pricey, but it's a it's a great distillery, uh, and I think it really shows in my, my collection just how much I like it, because I've brought a lot of, a lot of Springbank. Um, but yeah, that, that's another point just to take in with building a collection. Uh, another point or add on to my, my point with like Cadenhead independent bottlers, as, as I, I was saying, I have got a few um, independent bottlers, uh, quite a, a lot of the same bottler, uh, different whiskies. I mean, we've got a Glen Cadem here, a Glen Talkers, uh, I think one might be a Glen Elgin, possibly, yeah, Glen Elgin, Manic Moore, and a Ben Nevis. Uh, so you're getting a good idea of what. The bottlers like and luckily with Carnmore every single one has been a hit. Uh, I've never really had a bad Carnmore that I can think of. Um, so it's, that's one other thing I build my collection, my selection on. I will buy Carnmore again because I know that they're a good quality um, and that's why I've got so many of them because they've not really let me down. This one, the Glen Cadum, uh, Glen Cadum, it's not the greatest Glen Cadum I've had but it's still nice and this was just um, previous to them rebranding a couple times. Uh, the, from this, the uh, series has improved and improved for me. Uh, this is still a good whisky, don't get me wrong, but it's not the best Glen Cadham I've had. Um, everyone who watches my channel or everyone who knows me knows that I love a Blair Athol, so when people get me gifts for Christmas, uh, or birthdays or that, it tends to be there's usually a Blair Athol in there and it's good reason because I really enjoy Blair Athol. This is one of the more, um, how would you say, eccentric Blair Athols, Blair Athols that I've got. Uh, a little bit more of packaging, uh, however the juice, just trying to get out this, this um, elaborate Chinese or Japanese uh, <laughs> puzzle trap. Uh, let's see if it'll just slide out there. There we go. I really think I should just start displaying it like that on the, sh the shelf. Uh, the box adds a lot to it. It's very well crafted. But this is Douglas Lang, Blair Athol, uh, 21 year old. And as you can see, I've had a, a little bit out of that. It's a, it's a nice whiskey. And, oh, that, what's that? Cork's just not wanting to come. It's like one of those glass corks. I'm always scared to open it. It's got, it seems like it's got a bit of a vacuum. But uh, yeah. Blair Athol's another distillery like Springbank that I really enjoy and my collection's kind of built around that as well. I've got a lot of Blair Athol's and I think once you find, if you are trying to buy, build a, a, a collection up, uh, once you find that distillery, you'll build your collection that way. Uh, that was really, really tight, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, that was a tight seal. So yeah, I think when you find that distillery that you, you've maybe had one or two for them, good idea to try it at pubs. Uh, I think that's how I first got into Blade Athol. I tried it at some pubs, bought some bottles, uh, and then I realised that, yeah, I'm really enjoying Blade Athol. Getting samples from people, getting samples from friends, you start to realise that you've got a fondness for a certain distillery. Uh, and I think once you, you go there, 
Uh, there's no real coming back, you end up buying everything from the distillery because you know that they're good quality. Uh, so that's one way, a great way to build your collection for sure. Depending on what you're wanting from your collection, what you want from this, this video, I, I might be the, the wrong uh, person for people who are looking to build a collection for investment or looking to build a collection for show, which I've got nothing wrong with. Uh, well, whiskey is supposed to be drunk, but it's, it's, it's each to their own, it's their own money. But I mean, I've got kind of whiskies here that are classed as collectibles. Uh, this Daft Mill 2009 cask 29 for the UK, it could be considered uh, a collectible, a rare whiskey, whatever you like, but for my collection, my selection, uh, I genuinely buy bottles to open, drink, share um, and try with friends and let them see what they think and stuff like that. So I think that's one major component when thinking about building a collection. Uh, it depends, a lot of my bottles I'm not showing with the boxes, a lot of them I just take the box, the box gets put in my garage. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a display wall, so it depends how you want to go around building a collection, why, what purpose you've got for building that collection, because uh, like I said with fancy boxes and that, they look nice on shelves, but if you're drinking the whiskey then there's no point in having the box, um, but yeah, Daft Mill definitely get a shout out, uh, love the stuff and wish I had loads, loads more to drink. The Single Cask, uh, I think it's called Single Cask Limited or Single Cask Company, uh, a Kalila, 11 year old. I had a Linkwood, which I finished rather um, quick. We've got a, a Dal Ewan, 12 year old. Uh, this Blair Athel is lovely coloured, very uh, brightly coloured, or sorry, darkly coloured um, Blair Athel, 11 year old, uh, finished in an octave or matured in an octave cask. And an inch fad, which is from um, Loch Lomond Distillery. They're peated expression, four year old, and some donations going to the NHS, which I thought was a good touch. Now, I've had a few. I've had the Kalila, the uh, Linkwood, and I think I've had some samples of other uh, single casks. I got a few bottles of them because I could afford it, and I thought, yeah, I want to try them out. Some of them have been great, and some of them have been a bit of a, a, a mess. Uh, so that's just the kind of gamble you take when building a collection and when trying different um, whiskies from the same independent bottle. Hopefully the Dal Ewan, uh, I've not really got much high hopes for the Inch Fad because I've, I've never had Inch Fad so I've not got anything to base it on. But for a young whisky and peated generally does um, provide quite an interesting experience. So I've not really got high hopes for that anyway other than the, the youngness and the peated. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the Blair Athol. I like Blair Athol in Bourbon. It, it seems to do a lot better in Bourbon. This is going to be very sherry because it's an octave, going to be quite heavy on the sherry. Uh, so I'm just hoping that some of the Blair Athol character will still come through, still promote through. Um, but when I seen this, I just thought, why not? It looks amazing, uh, the color. So yeah. <laughs> Ardemarkin, <laughs> what can we say? People are going crazy for new distilleries, new whiskey uh, in general really, and FOMO is playing a big part. The first Ardemarkin I wasn't too bothered about. I don't really know much about Ardemarkin in a, in a sense. I know about the company, I know about Adelphi. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Adelphi that own it. Uh, let's just see, and Adelphi, I might not say that, but Adelphi are a good company. Um, produce some bangers as well, independent bottlers. Uh, so I made the plunge on the second bottle, the second release, uh, got given it blind, Stevie opened it, he had it, we had him round and 
he opened, he said, oh, what, what ones can I open? Uh, I gave him a list of whiskies that he could open, or maybe I gave him a list of whiskies he couldn't open or didn't want open at the time. But he opened this and I had this blind and I felt like it was a lowland. I was really drawn to it being a lowland whiskey. To be honest, I, I had a, an image in my mind of what it was, but it wasn't that. But it was a great experience and I, I really enjoyed this whiskey. Uh, I can see myself buying more Ardnamurkin based on this. Maybe not just their current releases, but I would like to see an aged, um, when it comes of age, I'd like to see an aged Ardnamurkin to see how that does. Uh, but th this was a great whiskey and I really enjoyed doing the, the blind experiment. It really kind of, I wouldn't say it swept me off my feet, but it did surprise me when I found out what it was. So a nice young whiskey and a good example of a new distillery um, doing well, doing things right. Back to building a collection. Uh, companies like SMWS or services like SMWS might be suited for you for building selections. They are a membership service where you pay so much um, for a year and you get access to bottles um, of, of whiskey. My main hang up on SMWS is probably I've had stuff from years past um, and I don't feel it's the outruns are as good uh, from what I've had. I mean, this is this was a fantastic this is a fantastic whiskey. I really enjoy this, uh, but generally speaking, some of the newer ones I've had I've not really enjoyed, uh, as opposed to uh, maybe seven years ago, ten years ago. So I think things have changed a little bit. But this might be good for you. Uh, like I said, my only hang up is that you pay for the service, the membership, you get access to the bottles, but then you, it's not guaranteed that you'll get the bottles at this time. Um, some bottles sell out quite quick. So it seems a shame about the, the membership service. One thing I would promote, um, not for myself, but maybe for someone who's new to whiskey, new getting into whiskey, doesn't know where to start, maybe a bit overwhelming, is Somerton Whiskey Club. Uh, they're 50 pound every two months, and every two months you get a whiskey, a random whiskey. Uh, it could be a world whiskey, uh, it could be a scotch. So I think that's a good service to try and get in. I don't think that's asking too much, 25 pound a month and every two two months you get a whiskey. So maybe worth checking them out if you're wanting to build a collection. Um, but also you can check out SMWS, see what you think. But I wouldn't recommend that to someone who's just starting out their collection. Another good independent bottler worth your coin, <laughs> worth your purchases uh, and for starting out a collection is AD Rattray. Uh, they have good outruns, sometimes distilleries that people maybe haven't heard of, sometimes distilleries that aren't too uh, common. So it's good to get a variety from them, an overall variety from them. This is, I don't know how you pronounce this, this is a very heavily peated Buna Havens. It's Stosha or Styosha. Uh, I don't think I've heard that being pronounced, so I'll just butcher it. Say, uh, yeah, Stosha. It's a six-year-old. It's fifty-nine point one percent, and I tell you what, I cannot wait to review this and get this guy this out to you. I don't know if it's available anymore. Uh, I think this costs about forty pound, and it does not drink like a six-year-old. Sixty, just under sixty percent whiskey. This is, I don't like saying the word. It's smooth as butter. It's creamy buttery and it just you could you could uh stevie and i <laughs> stevie and i got another stosha another heavily peat buna having it was a signatory 46 percent abv i think it was six year old or eight year old once again heavily peated and we managed to upon purchasing it purchasing it we managed to finish half a bottle in a night and it was just that easy to drink this is another example of that it's so easy to drink even though it's 59 percent in a young age 
uh, even though it's cash strength, you could just sit this until the bottle was gone. Um, I probably shouldn't be promoting it, I don't know how much influence I've got, but I really don't want people, <laughs> too many people knowing about this, uh, this th these, these expressions from Buna Haven because they are absolutely outstanding. But I suppose Sharon's caring, I just hope the price doesn't go up. Now what I hold in my hand here, and I've got a couple examples of it, is a blend. Now this is finished in port casks, it's unchill filter, natural colour, 43.5% ABV, and blended scotch whisky. So, I'm not sure if this is, I don't think this is all malt, this possibly has grain in it, uh, because it doesn't say blended single malt, or does it have to say that? Uh, I can't, I sometimes can't distinguish the, the, the differences between blends. Uh, let me just see what this one says. Pork, uh, the Scar Sig, blended malt scotch whiskey, yeah. So this says blended scotch whiskey, so this has grain in it most likely. This says blended malt scotch whiskey, so that is just single malt. And the reason I wanted to make an example of these is because in the past, blended whiskies were the whiskies that everybody used to drink. They were uh, affordable, achievable, and made relatively quick they had certain still three has to be three years in one day but um, I think with the grain stuff you could kind of make them a little bit younger and they didn't have to be single malts um, aged for 15 years or whatever or 10 years so they were quite accessible then people started getting snobby uh, me myself included uh, we went away from blends we started drinking more single malts and now it seems there's a maybe a not a u-turn but maybe just a slight uh, gradient off to the uh, blends again, and there's some fine examples. This McPink, I think £30, £35, House of McCallum, uh, the port really shines through in this, and the only issue I have with this is the cork's a bit uh, loose, I might need to get a new cork in there. Let me just see what I've got. Uh, so, it's a great example of a blend, uh, a great example of, like I said, it's not uh, fully malt, it's not just single malt, it's grain in that, and it just goes to show you that blends really do offer a lot. This Scalaseg, got a lot of time for this as well. Uh, once again, this is a blend of single malts from different uh, islands. And then you've got the likes of the Campbelltown, which are usually, or what I believe, these type of blends are kind of like teaspoon, uh, which is a term for, I think it's 99% one thing and then 1% something else, so that they, they don't call it what it actually is. Um, I might be wrong with that, but I think that's like 99% Glen Scotia and maybe 1% Kilkerran or Springbank or something. Uh, but I know for that fact that this one, this Vatting uh, trade region, trade secret, uh, Bourbon Hogshead, blended malt Scotch whiskey, this is classed as a blend, but this is a teaspoon example. This is pretty much predominantly one uh, single malt from one distillery and it's just got a little bit of something else in it so they can uh, for legal reasons and stuff like that, so they have to call it a blend. But yeah, I definitely, things like McCallum, uh, House of Pink, get your, get, get your kind of eyes onto that, get your radar onto that. This is an outstanding uh, blend, and I'm glad that I tried it, bought it, cheap, affordable, and it's still available. So this is definitely like a go-to drinker, an easy drinker, and one you probably should have in your collection. So yeah, uh, just to go on the back of the blends again, this is a Caden Head blended Scotch whiskey, 12 year old, cost me £42 on the auction, and another fantastic whiskey. Affordable when it comes out, it's quite um, achievable, you can pick it up uh, quite easily, it's not often, I don't think these are seldom sold out, um, or I think they're seldom sold out, sorry. I've not had a lot out of it, I've had a, a bit out of it, but yeah, really tasty stuff. 
uh, got grain in it, got single malt in it, and it just goes to show you that blends are um, blends are back, baby. <laughs> I don't know what made me say that, but hey ho, uh, that can maybe be the intro. So yeah, that's pretty much me done. That's me went through everything on my shelves. Uh, I've got stuff upstairs that I really need to sort out, uh, and I probably should just stop buying whiskies. It's almost like a, a shop in here and backfilling once one whiskey goes away gets put into the recycling another one comes down from the shelf and then they're buying and putting back up there and um, there's some in the barrel the barrel tends to be odds and ends uh, dregs that are on the shelf originally and i then pull down uh, to make space for stuff that's up in the cupboard so it's a little bit of a alice in wonderland down the rabbit hole when you start a whiskey collection once you start buying whiskies you'll, you'll end up being like Pokemon, you want to collect them all uh, and you won't stop. So it can be a bit of an addiction. I'd say one thing for new drinkers, new collectors, uh, people building a collection, don't get too hung up on FOMO, fear of missing out. Uh, I had a fear of missing out for a while and you end up doing stupid things, you end up buying stupid whiskies that either you're not going to drink, you're not going to make money on uh, and they just, they just kind of sit on the shelf. So yeah, just don't take too much into that. If you're finding yourself on social media or anything like that, going through and you're seeing whiskeys and you're like, oh, I need to buy that, I need to buy that, uh, I'd take a break from social media because FOMO is a really bad thing at the moment. Um, it's good for the whiskey distillers, it's good for the producers, they're making money. Uh, they're making money out of stuff they maybe wouldn't normally sell. But yeah, just um, keep an eye out for FOMO for sure. I think that's me done talking. Uh, these are going to go through into the conservatory now, hopefully it doesn't get too hot in there so that the floors in here can all get done. Uh, so if there's any whiskies you've seen uh, that have caught your interest that you want me to review, just leave a little uh, comment uh, and let me know. There's definitely some I want to get to and let you guys um, see uh, experience through me because some of them are absolute belters and I really do enjoy drinking them. But if there's anything you've seen anyway, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, I've been Stuart, this has been Whiskey Wins, I'll see you later. Up, 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 up,